Hello, this is Alex Rodriguez and welcome to my YouTube channel. I've had so many requests about baseball questions that I'm gonna get into some tutorials and I'm gonna talk a little bit about pitching, hitting, running the bases, SAT scores, trying to be a first run draft pick, even getting a college scholarships. I'm gonna talk at all levels. I'm even gonna talk about little leagues and I'm gonna talk to the parents out there to help their young kids become better baseball players. Cause by the way, some of you parents, you need the most help from me. Today I'm going to talk about the five pitches and this is something I'm really passionate about is pitching and the fundamentals of pitching. First of all, there's five major pitches. There's a fastball, there's a curveball, there's a slider, there's a changeup, and then the split fork ball. Those are five pitches. I'm going to first start with the fastball, the most basic pitch. You see this belly part of the, of, of, of the, the white part of the ball? This right here, you take your fingers and you put it right here, right on top and you throw it as fast as you can. And if you look at a clock, think about going from 12 to six and you're gonna spin it and you're gonna throw it as fast as you can right there and you're gonna push down. You're gonna push down as much as you can. That's what they call arm speed. And the revolution of how many times you turn this ball is gonna equate to how fast you're throwing it. So the best I've ever seen at the four seam fastball is Mr. Kurt Schilling, who really focuses on the northern quadrant part of, of the strike zone. He pitches up top. Boy, is that an unhittable pitch. 12 to six, spin it. That's your four seam fastball. There's three type of fastballs. Here comes the sinker. The sinker, you get the skinny part of the, the seams right here and you grab it right there. And you do exactly what you do with the fastball. You throw it right in the middle of the plate. And if it's a good one, it just sinks. It makes a right turn. It goes this way. For me, the best sinker I ever saw was a guy by the name of Mr. Kevin Brown who threw a cement brick. It was heavy, it was powerful, and it was devastating. So again, sinker ball right here. You throw it just like the four seamer, except it makes a right turn. It doesn't go straight as an arrow. And then is the third type of fastball is the cutter. And of course, Mr. Mariano Rivera is synonymous with the cutter. He grabs it just like this. You see what that Major League Baseball sign? You grab it just like the four seam. He throws it just like that. He puts a little bit of emphasis right here on this middle finger and that creates a little bit of turn. And right when it gets to the plate, it makes a left turn. Think about a number two pencil. And that's why when the ball goes like this, it carves up left-handed hitters. So now I'm gonna to talk to you about the curve ball. The curve ball, again, you get the skinny part of the seams right here you put your fingers just like that. Then you take your index and you stick it right in one of those seams. Now you wanna stick it for grip. Now the curve ball, you're gonna throw it just like the fastball, but at the very end, you're gonna turn it. And you want this to go from 12 to six on your clock. 12 to six, spin it as fast as possible. And one of the best I ever saw at the overhand breaking ball was my former teammate, Mike Musina. From the right-hand side and from the left-hand side, it was Barry Zito, who had a devastating dropper. Now I'm going to talk to you about the slider. The slider, again, you get the skinny part of the seams and you don't get, you're going to get this middle finger and you're going to put it right here on these seams for grip. And what you want to do is you want to come at it and you're going to turn it this way. So four seamers that way, curve balls this way, and now this is two to seven, two to seven. And the best I've seen there back in the day was Dave Steeb. Then more modern has been uh, David Cohn, who had a uh, Loretto, who had a, who he threw a Frisbee and, and he was so good at spinning it. The more you can turn this baseball, the bigger turns it is. If you want a smaller curve slider, then you don't spin it as much. And when you're really good like David Cohn, you can play with it really big or really small. The small one usually falls for a strike, the big one is a wipeout strikeout pitch. Now I'm gonna to talk to you about the changeup. The changeup is one of the most effective pitches in baseball. You grab the ball, now you remember this big white part of the ball? That's where we grab the fastball, remember that? Well this one, you're gonna do it this way, and this is called the circle change. Why is it called the circle change? There's your circle. See that circle, kids, at home? And you're gonna throw this fastball as fast as you can, 12 to six, and when you spin it out, it's gonna be 
like taking a parachute and just making it go slower. So you remember that curveball. I'm coming right at you. I'm going to throw as fast as you can. And that ball is going to come out about 80, about 10 miles an hour slower. So I'm going to take this and throw it as fast as I can, power change up. And because of my grip, it's going to come out like 10 miles an hour slower, almost like I pulled a parachute. And this becomes the equalizer and a very tough pitch. A great pitch back to my Dominican roots in the mid 70s. Mario Soto had a devastating changeup along with his power fastball. Of course, he played for the big red machine. And then from the right hand side, my former teammate Mike Mussina also can pull the string as well as anybody. From the left hand side, Jamie Moyer had the best changeup I ever saw. He finished his career as a 47 year old, was throwing the fastball at 81 miles per hour. But because he had this great circle changeup, which was his equalizer, he pitched very effectively. And then last but not least is your split finger. You take this grip right here and you take a little baby split. That's why it's called the split finger. Roger Craig introduced this pitch in the mid seventies to baseball. He of course taught it to Mike Scott. Mike Scott was a one man show with the Houston Astros in the mid eighties. He almost single handedly uh, beat the New York Mets. I know a lot of you out there remember this. And then Roger Clemens and Kurt Schilling took the split and added their version of it. They took the split right here and turned it into a fork ball. Now these guys all have really, really big hands. That's why, you know, this ball looks like a golf ball in my hand. It's not, it's a baseball. It looks like a golf ball in their hand and that's why they're able to dominate it. Most great pitchers that have uh, great fork balls have big hand hands like me. Roger Clemens, Kurt Schilling both have big hands. Hitters Willie Mays and Hank Aaron also have big hands. So the fork ball is a devastating pitch because you throw it and it comes out as a hitter. You see it right out of your hand and it looks like a fastball with no rotation and you think it's going to stay straight and it falls. And this is what makes guys like Kurt Schilling such a devastating pitcher, especially in October and Roger Clemens a big addition of why he won seven Cy Youngs and known by many as the greatest right-handed pitcher of all time. A lot of it is because of his devastating pitch called the fork ball. Anyways, that's my lesson for today. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back to you with a lot more tutorials from A-Rod YouTube. See you back.